Hi, I'm Steve Kovsky for Securing Our East City, and I'm glad you could join me today. We have a special guest. I would like to introduce you to one of the folks that had a hand in the creation of the Internet, and I mean was the truly the hand of the creator. Uh, he was kind enough to take a moment out of his busy travel schedule to join us live from Washington, D.C., via webcam, and I'm speaking, of course, about Mr. Vinton Cerf. Now, a lot of people have heard that Al Gore, former vice president, is the father of the Internet. And actually, as you'll hear from Vint, he did have a role. Vint, thanks so much for joining us. And tell us a little bit about the history. How did the Internet come about? Okay, I'm, I'm happy to do that. And by the way, Al Gore actually did have a role to play as well, and I'll explain that. Uh, this this could take days, so I'll try to be brief. Uh, the U.S. Defense Department was very interested in using computers in command and control. It carried out an experiment called the ARPANET, the Advanced Research Projects Agency Network, uh, in order to test that theory, uh, in, and in part also to allow computer science departments that were being funded by DARPA to um, uh, Make, to make use of each other's resources by sharing their computers across a network. So this network was designed to use a technology called packet switching, and uh, it went into operation in 1969. And the first node was installed at UCLA. I was a graduate student at the time, and I wrote the software to connect one of the UCLA computers up to this first node of a packet switch net. The second node came up a month later at SRI International in Menlo Park, California, so we had the first two-node uh, system running, and then four nodes at the end of uh, 1969. Well, this technology worked out extremely well. It was demonstrated publicly in 1972, and uh, after that public demonstration, uh, the idea uh, was pursued further, and it was recognized that uh, if we were really going to use computers for military command and control, the computers would have to end up being um, uh, on board or accessible through uh, mobile vehicles, aircraft, helicopters, uh, and ships at sea, in addition to fixed installations. And since the ARPANET project used fixed telephone line circuits in order to link the systems together, uh, that wasn't going to work for airborne or for you know, mobile tanks and things of that sort that run over the wires. So we had to use radio and satellite. The man that, uh, that pursued that program is named Robert Kahn. Robert was very involved in the ARPANET project, uh, which was led by another man named Larry Roberts. Uh, Kahn was very involved in the architecture of the ARPANET and then went to ARPA and pursued this idea of multiple networks being used for command and control, and then came up with this problem of different networks, satellite-based, mobile radio, and fixed wireline, and asked the question, how are we going to connect them all together in order to make it look like one system? That was the Internet problem, because we were trying to connect multiple nets to each other. He came to my lab at Stanford University in, as I recall, the spring of 1973, and together we sat down and designed an architecture and a set of protocols that would allow this to happen. Those protocols are called TCP IP, and of course many others have evolved since then uh, to go on top. And the network eventually was called Internet. And so my job uh, was to not only um, help uh, develop the detailed protocols and design with Bob Kahn, but then later to join ARPA and run the program for six years or so. And since that time, I've been involved in one way or another with uh, Internet's evolution. Now, I, should, I mentioned that Al Gore had a role to play. Uh, as a senator, he had hearings where he was asking about uh, the supercomputers that the National Science Foundation was uh, uh, having constructed for scientific purposes. And he asked the question uh, in the fall of 1986 whether it would be useful to interconnect those supercomputers with optical fiber networks. And a collection of scientists went to San Diego, in fact, in February of 1987 and returned from that uh, conference with the, uh, a design for a national research and education network that would link all the universities together. Uh, then Senator Gore was very helpful in getting legislation passed in order to pay for the National Research and Education Network program. And then later, as vice president, he had a very key role to play because in order to make the Internet um, accessible to the general public, uh, he, in fact, helped to pass legislation that made it legal 
to carry commercial traffic on the government-sponsored backbones. And that turned out to be an important step because it demonstrated to industry that there was a commercial demand for this kind of service. And that led to the creation of commercial Internet backbones. And, of course, what you see today is a global phenomenon uh, which is providing commercial service to, uh, to everyone. Well, thank you so much, Vince Cerf, for sharing that bit of history with us and uh, for giving Al Gore his due. This is Steve Kovsky with Securing Our E-City. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll be hearing more from this exclusive interview with Vince Cerf, founder of the Internet. Have a great day.